Hi, I'm Dr. Trevor Van Oostrom, one of the interventional pain physicians at Bloor Pain Specialists, and today we're going to be talking about common questions about pain medications. So some of the common medications that people get over the counter are Tylenol and anti-inflammatories. And they're somewhat different in terms of how they work. Tylenol tends to work more centrally on the brain. It changes the way you feel pain. Whereas an anti-inflammatory tends to work more peripherally on the inflammatory cascade or inflammation that occurs around joints and nerves and, and other structures. When we think about how they work and what you want them to do, we really have to think about uh, what's important to us and, and where the pain's coming from in order to think about whether they'll be effective and which one's better to take. Tylenol, or acetaminophen, works by tricking the brain, telling the brain, yes, I know it hurts, but I don't care. Or telling your brain not to care. It's not that important. Now, Tylenol also has some fever relieving properties and to some degree it might have some very very small anti-inflammatory properties but really it's not a true anti-inflammatory. Tylenol as a molecule should be able to cross the blood our bloodstream and then go into our brain and there's a certain gate in our brain that's responsible for sending pain signals and also helping reset our temperature um, and when it works on, on those specific gates in our brain, it's able to hopefully bring down a pain for a patient. True anti-inflammatories, otherwise known as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs, are the anti-inflammatory class we normally think of. These are the medications like Advil, Motrin, which are both actually ibuprofen, they're just different brands for the same medication, or Aleve, which is an aproxen. And uh, other ones in that class that are really, you know, often seen on shelves are Voltaren. Right? That comes in a gel, Voltaren gel. So, uh, which is diclofenac. And that can, diclofenac can also be taken by pill form, and there are other forms as well. But the purpose of the anti-inflammatories is not to trick the brain. It's to act in the tissues. So if your knee is big, swollen, puffy, full of fluid, red, it acts in the knee. When, when that happens, your body's going to try to bring in inflammation in that area. The blood vessels are going to get bigger. Blood flow is going to be much increased in that area. And, and that'll just help promote healing in that area. But with that, with that inflammation in, the, in those regions, you're going to get increase in pain. And that's, that's where your, your non-steroidal anti-inflammatories tend to work. Overall, the way they function is they're able to block a certain signaling pathway and that specific pathway is responsible for inflammation in the body. There's some important considerations with these medicines. They um, are very effective but they do have a ceiling effect so there's um, you know a maximum uh, efficacy you can get from taking non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. Medications are eliminated in different fashions. Some are processed through the liver, some are through the kidneys, and it really depends on the molecule. Some are processed through both organs. Tylenol is mainly processed through the liver and, and in high doses can cause liver toxicity. Hence, you know, one should always follow the, the manufacturer's recommended dose. For anti-inflammatories, it tends to affect the kidneys and, and with daily use, one should be monitored for their kidney function to make sure that um, they're, they're not causing harm. And the other big risk factor um, that's been discovered you know, more recently is that they do increase the risk of heart attacks, strokes, um, when, when taken over a long period of time. Thanks for watching this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. For questions about your care, contact the clinic directly.